Park, or Wolfpack Park 3 podcast. Let's fucking go. Stephen Marvin. Oh my goodness. Let's get right in there. Put him down for the birdie, dog. Just a outside. Gang is back together. Somebody give me a fucking putter. Hoard the putter. I had to make it. Hello, everybody. Per usual, we would like to give a big, warm welcome to one of our favorite sponsors on earth, Top Golf, for bringing us peach ice cream in Augusta, Georgia. Thank you for all you do. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the world famous Part Three podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Stephen Maubin, and I am here with Matthew Pavone. Thank you. <laughs> so good to see you, buddy. Yeah, I'm great. I'm really happy to be here today. In Augusta, Georgia. Who would have thought? Um, so to, to tell everyone, so maybe going on almost a year ago, I yeah. got um, a, a friend of ours contacted me yeah. and said, hey, my buddy, he's on the tour. He's a really great guy. You guys should meet, um, et cetera. What's his name? As uh, David. Yes. Yeah. And so he said something on DM and I said, oh, yeah, this, that and the other. And the next thing you know, he said um, he wants to go by the um, uh, Pavon wants to go by the shop. Yeah. So I said, oh, I'd love that. Thank you. Go by the shop. This is awesome. And um, we didn't get to meet. But the kids yes. at the shop, they said you were very nice, very kind. And they got a nice photo of you like holding the bag in the sure, shop yes. at the U.S. Open. Yeah. Was that your first time in L.A.? So first time in L.A., that guy, David, is now my... Uh, director of communication so we mm. work together uh and first time ever in la uh, heard about the brand loved it obviously you guys are doing a great job and uh, i find out that one of your shop was in la so this is how we get it we got in touch obviously we couldn't meet because it was a very busy week over the, the the us open right so i went to that shop buy some stuff and then here we are a year later amazing almost. <laughs> and so to, to to fast forward that one where you know the tour's going along and you're going from spot to spot just like everybody else and then all of a sudden you're in Torrey Pines. Yeah. So basically I got very lucky that the DP World Tour and the PGA Tour agreed 10 spots for the best player in Europe to come play in America for for the year after. So I got my sport uh, my spot in 2023. Uh, finish with four straight birdies in Dubai to get myself into the PGA Tour. On the DP Tour, yeah. yeah and on, it got you in. Yes, got me in. Started my year in Hawaii. Good finish. Top 10 over there. Sevens. Nice tournament in American Express uh, the week after. Um, and then I showed up in, in Torrey Pines and uh, got my first win on the PGA Tour after just three starts. And so three starts and coming from... It's what what I guess the history goes all the way back to like the Alps tour. Yes, Alps tour already like it's it's far, I almost can't remember the year, but it goes back like almost eleven years ago now. Yeah, eleven years ago goes Alps tour, then Q school for the DP. Yes, got my challenge tour card, which is second division in Europe. It's like the Comp Ferry, but European style, mm. and then finish six. Played only one year over there, and then I spent the last seven years playing on the main tour in Europe. On main tour in Europe, and that takes you all over Europe, and then you go to the Middle East, etc. Middle right. East, South Africa, Asia, we, we go a little bit everywhere, mm -hmm. except America. I mean, America, the last few years, we had same co-sanctioned events, uh, Barber's All and Barracuda Championship. Uh -huh. <clears throat> so I've been to Tao two times, a very beautiful oh, wow. place that I like. Yeah. I like beautiful a lot. there. One of the best golf courses I've played, beautiful area. And uh, and yeah, finally the PGA Tour in 20, uh, 2024. And so how'd you feel Torrey Pines week? Like when you showed up, is yeah. it, did it feel different or? The thing is, uh, it's funny, like sometimes uh, the wins come when you don't really expect. So we end up the tournament in uh, Palm Springs on Sunday. They moved Torrey uh, a day ahead because the Sunday was like, final of the conference of the Super Bowl. Mm. So it started on Wednesday and you had two golf courses to go see and prepare. And I never been in to Torrey before. <laughs> so I show up Monday, it's pissing rain, foggy. Course is closed, I can only walk and I hate to walk a golf course. Yeah. I, I, I love to play, I can play every single day of my life, but I hate to walk <laughs> without playing. 
So we take a wedge, uh, and no, just only a putter because we were not even allowed to, to chip. So take a putter, go from all 18 holes, couldn't see from T to fairway, from fairway to wow. green. So I'm like, wow, it's, it's tough. I don't know where I'm going to hit the balls. I can't see anything. I can see cliffs. I can see like the surroundings. I only know that the rough is quite thick, right? So Tuesday, play the north course, which is the easiest. Mm -hmm. Only work the south course on Monday. Play the, the easiest on Tuesday. And then I'm like to my caddy, ah, I don't know if actually I'm going to like that place. I know it's beautiful, but I like when I can aim to things. Yeah. And off the tee, it feels like it was really open, couldn't aim to a tree couldn't or to pick. a hill. Yeah. Not many bunkers also. Mm -hmm. So it was it was tricky for my eyes to really get to understand that golf course. And uh, we started the, day, uh, the, the tournament slowly on Thursday. I had like two unders, but I had like three birdies on my last five maybe to get on the par. And then in we are on Friday, toughest golf course of, of the twos. And I shot... Uh, 65, I think, seven under. <laughs> so our first time playing that golf course, which is the toughest, and everybody, all the media were like, oh, what you've done, achieved today, it's quite amazing. It's the best run of golf on the South Coast this week. Uh, how did you manage that? It's a very tough golf course. And to be fair, because I was playing it for the first time, I didn't realize that was that hard. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it right? works. So yeah. everybody telling me this, I was like, whoa, uh, yeah, that was that was it nice. It wasn't but that hard yeah, for me. Yeah, that was that that wasn't that hard that day. And then I I kind of understand why they were saying it it was hard looking back at it. And I show up on Saturday on the weekend in contention and I battled so hard that day to just shot level. It got hard. And then I was yeah. like, okay, you guys got me <laughs> in a position now I really feel like that golf course is hard. Mm. And uh, I mean Sunday just uh just had a beautiful round. Um, I said to many people, actually, which is the best thing about that day is that I bogey the first. So I get a little bit away from the lead, like maybe four shots. But I bogey the first, and every time I show up on the golf course, my only my ultimate goal is really to beat the course. I play against the course first, and after maybe a fail, you know what I mean? Mm. And I made bogey on the first, and it's a tough course, and you know you gotta have 17 holes which are tough behind afterwards and i just i was like just in a mentality where i had to show up and hit the shots i was like if you want to beat the course because now he has one shot ahead is yeah. one shot ahead of you you have to really play the shot with like focus commitment and not be scared to do it mm. and that put me through a very nice mindset and going through my my, my round it really helps me it's amazing okay so saturday you fought to shoot even par yeah. battle up and downs long pods just staying in it staying in it stay in it yeah stay close to the lead don't drop too many shots stay like close to what you can couple back yeah couple yeah, back yeah, yeah, just yeah, yeah. no contention. problem yeah get through the day you shot True. one you got through it so you were like ah. and then that night you go to sleep you wake up come back out you're ready to go bogey the first hole yeah and then it almost gets you a little pissed off yeah, of course. Maybe ego, you know. Yeah, yeah. You don't, you don't like, like that. You start the today. first round, you three putted your first green, and you're like, oh, come <laughs> on. You're like, come on. You, you slept all night. You dreamed about that day that's going to be so nice being in contention. Last group <laughs> on a, on a Sunday putt. at Torian, you three put the first. You're like, come it's on. Like, so then what happened? You, then you, you make a couple pars, make some birdies. Couple pars. I think I birdie like, uh, let me check. Like I birdie like fourth. Then I birdie like six and seven or seven and eight. And all of a sudden it changed a little bit the momentum because I birdie six, seven and nine, I think. And all of a sudden now I- two under on the front. Yeah, I'm like, no, I, actually I was, yeah, two or three under on the front and I'm like leading the tournament for the first time of the week. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, and I'm like, here we go. Like, and now, yeah, like, now you, you don't have, you have to really embrace that and go for it. And we know at Torrey there are very tough holes starting from 10. Like 10 is not easy. It's short, but it's not easy. 11 is a beast of a par three. Like four or three iron. 12 is like driver and you get on top of that uh, four iron. Uh, so it's it's really like, as I said, like you can hide. It's the type of golf course where you can hide. It's tough and it's tough 
for everyone. So if you want to shoot under par, you have to really pull the shots. Yeah, you have to go after it and of go course, for the yeah. pins yeah. and deal with it if you miss the shot and grind out of it, but just keep going at the pins. Yeah, keep going the closest you can to the pins for sure, but really hit the shots. There, there is no space for tough golf course like this to just play it a little bit, you know, shy yeah, yeah, and try yeah. to find the open side of the green yeah. and try to just chip it somewhere there. It's, yeah. You have to to be committed. You have to hit it with focus, with determination and really don't be scared to miss the shot. I love that. Okay, so then back nine, you what happens on the back nine? Yeah, back nine. You're in the I, lead. Yeah, in the lead. I think I parted the seven straights uh, holes on my back nine. Then I got to the 17. It was a tricky hole for me because I hit the ball from left to right. The cliff is on the left, traps on the right. So it's really like the type of hole where I have to aim a little bit left, trust my curve and let it come back close to the fairway. Had a super drive, hit it on the green a bit far, but okay. I had two shot lead at that, at that time, you know, and I had my first putt, leave it like four, four foot short, which usually is not too bad, but we are on this West Coast Pohana bumpy. grains. It's yeah. getting bumpy. It's bumpy, yeah. all day people, all week. That was wet from Monday, yeah. raining all yeah. day. And I felt like I had a good putt where I wanted and the ball doesn't go and it goes almost all the way. And I made that bogey and now I'm just one shot lead going into 18. <sighs> And uh, it's uh, it's money time, you Who's know. Who's in second? So in second is Nikolai Oshgar. German. Yeah. Uh, no, it's Nikolai Oshgar, Danish guy. And Danish Ste guy. Stefan Jager was, I think, two shots from. Yeah, him. and I remember it was yeah. like the three of you guys, yeah. the Europeans. Three European last yeah. group yeah. playing to win Torrey Pines, and amazing. Nikolai is an amazing player. He just come from the Ryder Cup in uh, September that they won in Italy. Super confident guy. He won in Dubai. Mm. The final of the race to Dubai, mm. he wants that. So he's trending, you know, he's mm. the guy who, who is doing great. You're in the group with yeah, him. Yeah, and I'm on the group with him. And uh, <laughs> obviously, I meet Bogey, so he hits the driver first and he's trapped down like 315 yards drive 19. straight in the middle of the yeah. fairway. So by making that Bogey, also, he kind of helped me on 18 because I was like, okay, listen, dude, if you want to win that tournament, you have to go for a birdie on the last. Mm -hmm. It's a birdie that you need. You have to be to make birdie because you don't want to have any part of luck going on. Like yeah. you don't want like uh, maybe one of the guys playing with you is not doing the right choice or whatever, make some mistakes and this is the way you win. I was really on like, you have to win. go birdie and win it. Yeah. So I hit a drive a little bit left, find my ball against the leap of the trap tried to come back on fairway. I don't know if my ball just clipped the lip when I hit it, but it goes left in the rough. And here we are, Torrey Pines rough, thick. Lane like, two. Yeah, into 140 yards from the pin, water in front of me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And which I'm lucky is like, as soon as I get to the ball, I see that the lie is really playable. Mm. And my caddy was like, ah, oh, Matt, I don't know, maybe we should just lay up and get a chance to make par. And by the time we talk, like Nikolai Osgar just hit a beautiful, I can't Stop remember it. if it was a hybrid or iron shot on the green. Yeah. So eagle chance. So you know he has birdie at the so, least. So I know he's going to make birdie. So I'm like, well, if I lay up and I chip and I make power bogey, it's, a, it's either playoff or losing the tournament, making yeah. bogey on the last. Bogey, yeah, yeah. bogey in 17, bogey in 18. I'm like, it's <laughs> like no chance. And... I feel quite pumped, a lot of adrenaline, because I mean, you, yeah. have to take care of that. Yeah. you have to take care of that. And yeah. uh, I said to my caddy, I said, listen, there is no fucking chance that I hit that ball in the water. Yeah. It's either it's going to be on the green or on the back of the green, but yeah. trust and, me. And in the rough, it's going to take the spin off. Yeah. So I said, there is no way it goes in the water. Yeah. So he just said, okay, listen, yeah, that's fine. I wanted to play a nine first. Cause I was so pumped that he said, okay, at least play a eight. Yeah. I was like, fine. Took the eight. Aim to the middle of the or, um, aim to the middle of the green. I know the 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 face would shut because it's a little bit dense on the yeah. on 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 the above. <laughs> and uh, the face shut, beautiful draw, land up perfectly in the slope, which is really steep. Like people mm. cannot understand 
like through st TV screen. Yeah. But that left part of Torrey Pine is it's like steep. the is the steepest part of the entire golf course. Yeah. Like all the greens. Yeah. If you want the steepest slope, it's probably yeah. that one. And my my ball kind of fit like closely to the pin, like uh, about ten foot. And I don't know why I had that feeling that from that moment when I saw where my ball stopped, I had like no chance to miss that but yeah. it was only <laughs> yeah. no but it was only positivity like i'm gonna play with you tomorrow yeah uh we we have a fun game and then that that is gonna be like a four four foot putt that i think i can miss it yeah. comes in my mind i'm, yeah, I'm yeah, probably gonna yeah. miss it yeah but at that time i don't know i was such so much dialed in and so much in the zone yeah that i knew i had no chance to miss the yeah. putt it was only going in and so then you got up and the hole looked this big and you just made it. Yeah, so after, of course, you get stressed, you feel stressed, your heart rate, is, it's <laughs> pumping, you know. But I, I like to do, um, I've done the same thing in Dubai when I made that last putt to, to go to the PGA Tour. Um, I practiced with a small tutor with two, you know, metal balls. Mm. And I practiced my ball start through this, you know, it's like a gate. Yeah. And um, what I, what I, what I, what I've done is like just picture myself on that, on that board, like on top of that 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 just uh, small drill plate, and I was like, man, listen, if you hit the ball straight, not touching those metal balls, you you win the tournament. That's so, it. which is funny is like the putt was actually ten footer, but me, in my mind, it was only like a one foot putt. Yeah. If my ball started through the gate, if my ball went uh, was going through the gate, that was going in. Yeah. So it's and it it's, went in. It's, and it went in. So and champion on the PGA <laughs> tour. And now we're at Augusta, Georgia. Yeah. Now we are. Unbelievable. Your caddy Bernard? No, uh, my caddy is uh, is Woody Mark Sherwood. Mm. He Mark was Sherwood. There. Yes. Unbelievable. It's tournament and major season in the world of golf, and we at Par 3 Podcast are locked in on Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app, where you can turn your golf knowledge into serious cash. You can now win up to 100 times your money on Prize Picks with as little as four correct picks. Prize Picks is the best way to get action on sports in more than 30 states across the country, including California, Texas, and Georgia. Prize Picks is really simple to play. You can make picks and submit your entry in less than 30 seconds. Prize Picks now offers Apple Pay for quick and easy deposits. Par 3 Podcast has cashed out on Prize Picks before, and they'll do it again. Download the app today and use code PAR3 for a first deposit match of up to $100. That's code PAR3 for a first deposit match of up to $100. Pick more, pick less, it's easy. PAR3 and prize picks are coming for the top of the golf leaderboard together. Our picks get paid. Prizepicks.com slash PAR3. And so fast forward from there. I see you at to uh, Pebble, Pebble the week a after. week later, yeah. And um, so I see him on the on the course, and he, he says, "Oh, what's going on?" I said, "Oh, come by the shop, you know." And he's like, "Oh, my wife's with me. She dressed for California weather, right?" <laughs> and she's, she thought uh, that it was going to be warm. Yeah, she she thought she she came with my son, because uh, I I mean you know how it is on the road. You you cannot really see your family whenever you want. Mm. So that was the right time for us to to see each other. And she was freezing cold. <laughs> <laughs> and so we went to the shop and got her some like men's like hoodies and fleeces. Like yeah. there wasn't enough warm stuff for for mob and women's. So we got her geared up and we got to hang out there. And you did you, you played well that week too. Finished third, yeah. Third. Yeah. And finished you may third. have finished better if it didn't uh end we never know yeah um, ended short though right yeah ended short uh only three rounds uh didn't had a, a chance to play on sunday with some of the best player in the world i would have been paired with uh windham clark major champion yes. super nice guy super nice golfer ludwig uh, aberg Ryder Jason cup player up there yeah L uh, ludwig Ryder cup player uh just uh I mean, turned pro like six months ago. I, oh, now maybe a year in top ten in the world. Like, how good is this guy, right? Unbelievable. Uh, so that would have been for me a very nice pairing, and a very nice opportunity to play with the best. As you say, one of your guys, Jason, chasing, uh, chasing Jason us was too. Chasing too. Yeah. yeah. So that that would have been a um, a very a very nice and interesting day for sure. And how did you? Um 
How do you like Pebble? I loved it. Love uh, it, right? What a place. I mean, it's one of the iconic scenes on the PJ Tour for uh, for several years. I mean, it's uh, it's uh, the one of the golf course you dream about playing. You have uh, you have like golf course like St Andrews back in Europe. You mm -hmm. have golf courses like uh, August National, but you have golf courses like Pebble also, which are absolutely pure. And which course is harder, Spyglass or Pebble? For our that's a good question. Um, I think Spyglass is a little bit trickier. Like yeah, Pebble is really, do. really straightforward. You know, yeah. uh, I feel like in Spyglass you can make more mistakes than really at Pebble. Mm. Yeah. And Pebble is very small greens. That's the hard part of it. Yeah. We were lucky because at that time of the year, wet. It's a little bit wet. Yeah. Rough is not that thick. I played the US Open in 19 over there. And, oh, you did. And that was different. Yeah. <laughs> that was different. Was that was different. that was tougher. That was not the toughest pebble uh, they, they, they've, they've played. Mm -hmm. uh, not the hardest one. I heard like back in the days when uh, GMAC won was really firm and tough. But that was still a, a tougher golf course than what we played at uh, AT&T. Amazing. Well, thank you for sharing all, the, all of that. So I, I did some research and understand your father is a champion uh, soccer player, football. Correct. Correct? Yeah, he and is. And you played most of your life. Yeah. That was your sport. Yeah. So I've played 13 years, 13 years of football, uh, as we call it back home. Yeah. <laughs> um, 13 years of football and I... To be fair, I really stopped playing football when the COVID showed up because before that I was still playing like indoor stuff with friends, five aside every Monday. So I, it part, it's part of me and my roots growing up and uh, I never really stopped. But uh, yeah, I think COVID kind of uh, stopped a little stopped bit everything. for everyone and that was yeah. a big boost for, for golf globally yes. at that time. Yes. And so what happened? That's when you started golfing heavy? No, so basically I started golfing heavy when I was 16. I kind of quit football when I was 18, like two years after. But I just felt like I re what I really liked about individual sport more than really golf is like the performance is really related on me, mm. the, my hard work, my discipline, my commitment to it. And in like team sport, which I'm missing a lot because it's so good to share emotions with people mm -hmm. and not be alone. But you you have guys, you don't know what they do, you don't know what they prepare. And then in the end, it's the team winning or the team losing and yeah. you're not like... You, in charge. Yes, you're not yeah. in charge yeah. of the win or yeah. of the loss. Yeah. And I prefer, the, yeah, I prefer it that way. And your mother is really good at golf? Golf teacher, yeah. Golf she, instructor. So golf instructor, she was um, she was in the French team as an amateur, amateur French team. But at that time, like many, many years ago, it wasn't like professional golf for women wasn't as big as now. And obviously my dad had a career in football. So she, she just stopped really playing to uh, become a mom and uh, raise, up, uh, raise myself up and my two brothers because my dad was already having a career mm. and uh, she decided just to uh, to teach her, her patient. Unbelievable. And you didn't want to try golf earlier? You were yes. Just... No, I played golf since I'm really a kid. I, you I, learned how to play little. Yeah, I yeah. learned how to hit a ball very little because my grandparents, when I was on holidays, they would always bring me to a, a, a range yeah. and I was uh, I was staying on the range for, for days and even when my grandpa wanted me to come back up, I was running and hiding on the range to make sure he, he can't really catch me because I wanted <laughs> to stay and keep playing. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, no, I, I all my life I play golf, but... When I started to take lessons when, was more when I was 12, 13 years old. And when I decided to fully commit to it and to make this as my life, uh, it was when I was like 16, a little bit later. What a move. And so yeah. now you're in Augusta, Georgia, playing the Masters, your first Masters. Uh, whom, did you get your pairings? Yeah. Who do you play with? So I'm playing with Keegan Bradley nice. and I'm playing with Tyre Hudson. Nice. Yeah. So two great players that I look forward to. Uh, played with Keegan earlier this season. Was really, really impressed. Super solid player. I mean, he's done so nice yeah. last year too. Yeah. 
So it is great to play with uh, a Ryder Cup player. Yeah. And obviously Tyrell, which is Ryder Cup 2, never had a chance to play with him. One of the big names in Europe because he wants many times yeah. uh, back home. So yeah, I, I can't wait. It's going to be a super exciting two first days. I saw him today out there playing. He was behind the group I was following and he was playing with no hat on. Yeah, I loved seeing it. Yeah, no. just no hat. I, love, the... I I really like the character. He, he doesn't hide from anything. When he has something to say, he just says yeah. it. When he's like grumpy, he doesn't care. Mm -hmm. And uh, I like those players which have a little bit of you know fire. It's mm -hmm. it's nice than just seeing like the perfect prototype of the yeah. golf player. You Keegan know, has it, fire too. Yeah, yeah, right? sure, It'll sure. Be a fun group. Sure. No, I. I love the group that I have. I'm going to enjoy it so much. Do you tee off on Thursday morning? We are afternoon. Afternoon. 1 p.m., yeah. Whether you're a world-class athlete or a podcaster, we all understand the importance of mental and physical well-being and proper recovery for top-notch performance. That's why we are excited that Unified Healing is sponsoring this episode of the PAR3 podcast. What is the EE system? Unified Healing is a new and super innovative global network of wellness centers powered by Energy Enhancement System, or EE system. If you haven't heard of the EE system yet, you'll want to listen up. This technology promotes wellness, deep relaxation, purification, and rejuvenation. Whether you're in California or hundreds of other locations across the globe, access to a center is easy and affordable. Interested in experiencing the EE system technology for yourself? Go to unifiedhealing.com slash par to learn more and find a center near you. That's U-N-I-F-Y-D healing.com slash P-A-R. No material or testimonials on the Unified Healing website are intended to be viewed as medical advice or the substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Always seek the advice of your physician or other qualified healthcare provider with any questions you may have regarding a medical condition or treatment and before undertaking a new healthcare regime, including the EE system. For the people who obviously, like myself, never played uh, Augusta, yeah. what um, what do you take away from it in your in your scouting and your practicing, whatever, what, what <laughs> it's obviously like different than all the other places. Really different. They are like, they are like pins that you can't play for. They are pins where you just play for a zone and you totally forget about the pin. Cause if you miss on the wrong spot going to, towards the spin, you get no chance to get it up and down. And even more, sometimes you get worse than a, a bogey or a double bogey. Yeah. So it is this type of course. Um, it's a lot about angles too, depending on where you're going to be on the fairway, depending on the pin position, you're going to have easiest shot. I'm not saying they are easy, but you're going to have better chance, better chances to get close. Yeah. And also like try to understand where are the low points and the high points on every green. Never stay above the hole. It's really like something like being above the hole here at Augusta, it's it's no good. It's not fun. No, it's not fun. Obviously, with the success, you're exempt for years to come, mm -hmm. this, that, and the other, which it has to be a great thing. I, you know, I know you have a, uh, a young child. Yes. Which is daddy's doing his job. Yes. <laughs> daddy's working, right? Yeah, that is working. Yeah, yeah that's, that's great. Right. And your wife's lovely. And so now what about like... Obviously, we have the Olympics Yes, is coming up. That's in your mind. It is big time in my mind. Yeah, it must be. <laughs> <laughs> it, wasn't, it wasn't much uh, last year because it started last year, you know, to get into Olympics. But the more and more I went through my season, I won back in Spain in last October. Then won here in, in, um, in Torrey in January. Then I got myself into the Olympics. And... How cool is it to play Olympics in your country yes. on the golf course where you play the French Open many years? I mean, nothing can really get better than that. And so it's all locked up. You're playing the Olympics. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I think there are still very, very few chances that I'm getting out of it. You're playing it. But I would say if the odds are very low, it's probably <laughs> yeah, a 99% right. yeah. chance I'm going to be it, in the Olympics. The, the, the captain of the team, if they don't put you in, it, it, they, they would, they would, they would <laughs> they'd, be, they'd be in big trouble. I think. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I, I think it's more about like world rankings points and yeah, stuff like this. You're in. But I think it, it won't move. I think I'd be in the Olympic in August in Paris. And then Ryder Cups coming back along uh, New York, 
Mm -hmm. right so that has to be a, a little yeah, something to, to keep uh, in your head as well i think that's a very exciting one um i mean i'm sorry to say that but uh, we kicked your house at the, <laughs> yeah, at, at yeah, the yeah, last yeah. one right? it, was, it was hard to watch for that <laughs> but um yeah i mean going back in new york uh we know how is the crowd over there mm -hmm. super like excited about it so yeah it's a live dream winning majors being in the Ryder cup now I am like in comfortable situation. I've made some great things. I have to do way more to get a chance to play in the Ryder Cup, but at least I achieved something nice in the yeah, last few yeah. months. So yeah, we're gonna work on it. Uh, do my best, uh, as I said, to, to get into that Ryder Cup. And I'm sure that Ryder Cup uh, in New York is gonna be fire. Yeah, they, they, all of Brooklyn is showing up. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah, all of like yeah, my I friends' know. uncles in Brooklyn are like, just wait till we get out there after yeah. the way they did us in Italy. Yeah, but yeah, it's like it's, Brooklyn. It's still sport, and uh, it is nice. It it is nice to get like some strong adversity by going, going, you know, to uh, to to New York even more. Like the players in the American Ryder team are so good. And uh, be having the the crowd with them that week, and the New York crowd is gonna be very special. It's fun, even for Keegan. I watched the um, the Netflix, the yeah. Full Swing, yeah. and it was that whole thing where when Keegan got the call, yeah, it was like such too, a yeah. heartbreaker. I know, and uh, this is this is where you can see how nice is a guy like Keegan. Keegan I mean, yeah. It is tough, like Captain yeah. Peak, you know, if you're not in the team, it can happen. It happened yeah. also in Europe. It can really happen. And the way he took it and the way he, totally. he, he managed this, uh, he managed the, the thing with his family afterwards, uh, cheering for the guys with the family and stuff. Yeah. I think he's, uh, he shows uh, how good is the guy. And I yeah. hope he will be in the next Ryder Cup. Yeah, and if you weren't a fan of Keegan and you watch that, you're a fan of Keegan. Yeah. Right? And as a human. I was already, I mean, I was already convinced that he was a super player and I played with him in Hawaii and played with him also the third round uh, at AT&T and uh, I think he's a super nice dude and he's a hell of a great golfer. Yeah, I like his little, like when he gets behind it, I like his little yeah. tweaky shit he does. No, it is, it's, it's cool. It's cool, yeah. Yeah, it's cool and he's been wearing Jordans forever. Hey. And you're a sneaker head too? Well, I, I like to wear nice shoes, yeah. Sneakers, I love them. Yeah. Uh, but by saying that I have a collection and stuff like that, I have like f maybe four or five pairs. But uh, yeah, I mean, getting like some it? fresh and nice kit is always Feel nice. A good feeling. Yeah, it's a good feeling. <sighs> long day, long drink. The finish long drink. Obviously peach flavor in Augusta, Georgia. Cheers. Well, I hope you play well. We'll be cheering for you. We'll be out there. Um, big fan. Thanks for sharing with us. No pleasure. Anytime. You're the absolute best. Everyone, Thanks, Matthew Pavone. Thank you, guys. <laughs>